Um, so hi everyone, my name is Kate Hall and I'm working the sequencing and discovery genomics core at the Stowers Institute for Medical Research. And today I'll be telling you how we offer Curio's seeker spatial transcriptomics method as a core service. Stowers Institute is in Kansas City, Missouri, and we're a basic biomedical research facility. We work with model and novel model organisms such as planaria, which are little flatworms, cavefish, nematostella, lizards. Um, we don't do any human work, and mouse is really the most normal organism we work with. So with that in mind, the considerations that we had for implementing a spatial transcriptomics workflow at Stowers really needed to be a solution that was compatible for any organism suitable for discovery work. Um, this would mean an unbiased approach that captures mRNA or probe-based with technologies that might allow custom probe sets for our weird little critters, um, but those tend to be expensive. And um, we need it as close to single cell resolution as possible. Our tissues tend to be small, so a smaller capture footprint is okay. Fresh frozen tissue works for us, and like all cores, we need it to be affordable. You may have seen me or others from Stowers present in the past on how we were using the published method SlideSeq from Fei Chen's lab at the Broad Institute for our spatial projects. Um, we liked this approach because it is unbiased um, using oligo DT capture. Um, it uses barcoded beads with 10 mic micron resolution, can start with fresh frozen tissue, and being from a publication, um, this method was extremely affordable. So it was checking all the boxes that we needed and was a great place for us to start at Stowers. Um, and also Fei Chen's group has been absolutely amazing to work with and so very generous. Um, but of course, coming from a publication, you can appreciate that all the reagents had to be ordered from various vendors and there was no company to talk to for tech support. So we were really excited uh, when we heard that the SlideSeq method was essentially gonna be commercialized by Curio Bioscience. Um, this method was clearly checking all the boxes that I had already mentioned, being unbiased and micron resolution and relatively affordable. Um, being a commercial product from a company, it's of course gonna be more expensive than a homebrew method such as SlideSeq, but the price tag is not too high considering that um, probes and custom probe design is not required. And importantly, like Bertrand mentioned, there's no capital equipment needed, which is really important for core facilities to know. And on top of these checks, we're also gaining that the kit, um, it comes in kit form. Uh, so no more ordering individual reagents and there's tech support. There are people to talk to that can really assist um, if you need any help. And there's also the layer of flexibility baked into the workflow, which Bertrand touched on and I'll mention later. Um, and it's also really fast with the whole wet lab workflow from tissue to sequencing ready library being easily done within um, two working days. So one of our labs came to us wanting to do a slide seek experiment, looking at the immunosuppressive microenvironment of colon cancer in mice. And this was right when we, when we, we received a kit to test the Curio workflow. So we thought this would be a great opportunity um, to do both um, both methods side by side to help evaluate Curio Seeker product with our established SlideSeq workflow. And for this talk, I'll just focus on the Curio workflow part, um, but the SlideSeq part was performed according to the published method and you'll see some comparison of the data later. And I will say um, the information from this project is currently unpublished. So we have agreed with the lab that we won't go into too many specific details. It might be a little general. So this lab is studying intestinal cancers and they were interested in the spatial context of tumor tissue because of the complicated tumor microenvironment, including both innate and adaptive immune cells as shown in the image. This heterogeneity in the tumor is one of the main reasons for drug resistance. Um, so seeing the spatial pattern for how these cells are arranged and respond to treatments can be really important. So the lab provided four tissue samples from B6 mice injected with MC38. There were two colon tumor samples, one treated with a myeloid antibody and one control, and there were two spleen samples, again, one treated with a myeloid antibody and one control. And this is the basic workflow of how we approach the Curio Seeker workflow at Stowers, um, starting with the planning process and tissue optimization on the left side. 
And once the researcher has worked with our histology team to optimize the tissue sectioning, we move forward with the real experiment, um, which is what I'll focus on. And I show this chart just to illustrate how much of a cross-core collaborative effort this workflow is. It really utilizes the expertise of many of our core facilities at Stowers. The first step in our work workflow starts with our histology core. Um, they'll embed and freeze the tissue so that it's fresh frozen. Then they'll section and place the 10 micron thick tissue section of interest on the seeker tile. And these first images are what the seeker tile looks like, like Bertrand showed. Um, now it's important to note that images cannot be taken of the tissue once placed on the tile. So our histology team will actually collect adjacent tissue sections for H&E and DAPI staining to help inform later analysis. Um, this will kind of be going on on the side, like a little offshoot workflow that we just choose to do. Um, they'll collect and stain these adjacent sections and give them to our microscopy core for imaging and scaling. And you can see the tumor images on the top and the spleen images on the bottom there with the area of interest um, circled in each. Um, and th that's where the target um, to be placed on the seeker tile is located. So these should be almost identical to what the tissue on the tiles looks like. And this initial step is also where the advantage of flexibility comes in that I mentioned earlier and Bertrand mentioned as well. Um, you can absolutely adhere the tissue section to the tile and then freeze it um, at minus 80 for a couple days if you don't, um, if you don't plan to pro continue processing immediately. So that's really helpful. I'm now going back to the sections that go on the seeker tiles. Our histology core will then hand the project off to us in the sequencing group. And we'll do the mRNA hybridization, cDNA synthesis, library construction, and Illumina sequencing. And this whole process um, takes less than two working days. So it's a really quick workflow, which we really appreciate. Um, we create an Illumina library with a unique I7 and I5 index. Read one will be the spatial bead barcode and UMI information. Oops, sorry. We aim for at least 200 million reads per tile as suggested by Curio and run these on any Illumina sequencer based on the number of reads needed. Once the sequencing data has been generated, our computational biology core then takes over to do primary and secondary analysis. For primary analysis, they use the seeker pipeline from Curio, and then they can use um, packages such as Surat from Rahul Satija's lab for secondary analysis. For the initial pre-processing analysis steps, um, the seeker pipeline facilitates these key steps. Um, I won't go into too much detail, but I can give a little overview if we have any computational biologists here. Um, so first you'll tag the read to sequence using the spatial barcode and UMI sequence, filter the reads based on read quality score, then trim the reads like you can trim out the start sequence and the poly A tails if you'd like, and then convert the BAM files to FASTQ for alignment. Once the pre-processing is complete, um, you can then align the RNA sequences, assign the mapped reads back to the spatial location, um, collapse the read counts down to unique UMI counts, and finally generate the report giving an overview of QC information, statistics, clustering, and spatial patterns. And as I mentioned, we had done this particular project comparing Seeker with our existing SlideSeq method. And here we show some overall stats of the genes detected and beads detected from the two methods. And Curio is reported in the pink color and SlideSeq is in the teal color. And as you can see in the table, um, Curio detected about 23,000 genes for each sample while SlideSeq had around 20,000. And the beads detected was almost twice as high for Curio in all samples. And our analysts made the plots on the bottom, um, which are on a log scale showing the UMIs per bead and genes per bead for the two technologies. And we can see that Curio is higher for all samples in this case. Now here's the good stuff um, where we can see the spatial pattern of the tissue. So this is a spleen control sample and you can clearly see a beautiful spatial pattern in the image on the left, which is the Curio result um, versus SlideSeq on the right. And as highlighted in the table in the box, in the middle, the median number of genes per bead is significantly higher for Curio. So this was really exciting to see. The treated spleen sample, we also see the spatial pattern looking great and distinct. And again, the median number of genes per bead being much higher. 
Um, same story for the tumor control sample, looking so much better with Curio. The spatial pattern is much more defined. And then lastly, the tumor treated sample. Um, again, same story here. Uh, we were really excited when we saw how improved these results were when um, just looking at the whole project on this first pass of analysis when compared to SlideSeq. Overall, um, Curio seemed to capture more distinct transcripts compared to SlideSeq and it had a higher percentage of usable reads. Usable reads meaning that um, they were of high quality, matching a spatial barcode, mapping to the genome and aligning to the gene region. For example, um, here, the colon tumor sample, we have a high percentage of usable reads for Curio at 38% compared to SlideSeq at 23%. For the other three samples, we see that same pattern, which is very encouraging. So now we can briefly take a look at how the spatial data can be used to address the question of our lab's project. Um, one thing that can be done for all spatial projects is you can generate a single cell RNA-seq data set on the same type of sample to integrate and help provide more information of the cell types and transcripts being detected. Um, so for instance, here for the tumor sample, um, on the left, the spatial data was able to identify nine different clusters, but the lab did have a single cell RNA-seq data set as well um, in the middle that had clustered into 18 different cell types. And now on the right, when they combined the two data sets, they were able to um, just combine everything and give the spatial view um, an even more defined look by introducing all the different cell types. One example of something really cool that they saw spatially is here with the colon tumor samples. Um, they were able to use the single cell RNA-seq data to assist in identifying um, what were tumor cells versus myeloid cells and where they were located in the tissue. And when they merged this data um, on the far right there, they could see that the myeloid cells remain in the peripheral region of the control sample but the sample that underwent the antibody treatment allowed for the infiltration of myeloid cells into the tumor region. So that was just a really brief example of the power of this data because in the case for the colon tumor sample, they were able to confirm that the antibody treatment did change the tumor microenvironment from immune excluded to inflamed, allowing other cell types to infiltrate, which is on par with um, what has been shown in other publications. And um, again, that was just one example from the four samples that they um, were looking at. So in summary, uh, I hope I've demonstrated how we at Stowers have implemented Curio's seeker spatial transcriptomics method using collaborative efforts of a few different core facilities. The 10 micron resolution, the mRNA capture, and the fact that no capital equipment is needed all make this extremely easy to implement and also affordable. Our side-by-side -side comparison with SlideSeq has shown that Curio seems to capture more distinct RNA mo molecules. Um, Curio detected higher UMIs and genes per bead, and also Curio has more clear spatial patterns. And we were really impressed with this um, first set of data, and we have moved forward already with other spatial projects using the Seeker kit. And so far we've done projects on mouse fetal liver tissue, just waiting for those results. Um, the liver fluke, which is a kind of parasite. And tomorrow our group member, Caitlin, is gonna be starting a project on chick embryo tissue. So we're really excited to tackle more projects and look forward to seeing um, some more great data. And with that, I'd like to thank all the folks that make this, made this Curio project possible at the Stowers Institute, um, specifically Cece of the Lee Lab here, um, our histology folks, especially Seth, who has done the tissue handling for all our spatial transcriptomics projects. And you may have seen him um, give a talk on this at ABRF in Palm Springs earlier this year. Um, thanks to the sequencing team, of course. Uh, microscopy group, the computational biology core, and our mouse facility members. And a very big thank you to Marie and Bertrand of Curio and that whole team, the whole company, they have been extremely helpful and very wonderful to work with. Um, and of course, need to thank Fei Chen and his lab members who assisted with SlideSeq. And thank you to the ABRF for the opportunity to present to you today.